What happens when Wonder Kids fail? For every Messi, Ronaldo, and Neymar who reached their potential and went above and beyond, there are countless Wonder Kids who failed to reach their potential. And today we'll be talking about just that with the tragic story of Jacob Mellis. Now, Jacob Mellis had a pretty normal upbringing. He was born in Nottingham and started playing for his local side, the Vernon Colts, at the age of 6. And he was then selected to represent the Nottingham boys at the county level at the age of 10. And this is really where he was noticed for his exceptional performances that earned him a spot in the Sheffield United's youth team. And it was at Sheffield United that he really took his game to the next level. So much so that clubs like Manchester United, Liverpool, and Chelsea were all after him just when he was 16 years old. Eventually, Chelsea won the Jacob Mellis sweepstakes and bought him for £1 million, which is really crazy if you think about it for a 16-year-old and at that day and age in 2007. But this was at the time Chelsea was buying up all the talented youths just left and right. People even told Mellis to not go to Chelsea because of the sheer amount of other wonder kids that Chelsea were signing at that point. But nonetheless, Jacob Mellis backed his ability and decided to go to Chelsea anyways. He had a pretty impressive first year at the Chelsea reserve team. He and Chelsea reached the FA Youth Cup Finals in his first season where they would ultimately lose to Man City. With his pretty impressive first year, he would be loaned out the next season to League One side Southampton. Now this loan spell was a bit shaky because his manager Alan Pardew did play him out of position. And you gotta remember, he was just 18 years old at this time and it was his first taste at professional real man's football. Ultimately though, the loan only lasted 6 months because he would be recalled in January to provide cover for a depleted Chelsea team, who lost players like Drogba, Essien, and John Obi Mikel to AFCON in January. Although he was part of the Chelsea squad, he didn't really get to play until next season. When warming up for the upcoming Champions League match against MSK Zelina out of Slovakia, John Obi Mikel reported feeling something wrong with his hamstring so Carlos Ancelotti told Mellis to get prepared to play. And in the 89th minute, he would come on as a sub for his first ever minutes for the Chelsea first team. He wouldn't get any more minutes for Chelsea, so Ancelotti told him to go off on loan and he could be back with Chelsea the next season. As a result, he would get, he would get loaned out in January to Barnsley, where he would look much more confident and impressive than his his previous loan spell at Southampton. When he came back to Chelsea after his loan spell, things were different at Chelsea. Carlo Ancelotti was out as a manager and AVB was in to replace him. This was a very frustrating time for Mellis because AVB didn't really rate Mellis. So every time someone got injured, a younger player would take the spot in the first team over Mellis. And he couldn't even go out on loan to get some playing time because he needed one more year to be homegrown. And it was at this point that Mellis quit caring about football. Since he didn't get playing time regardless, Instead of training hard, he would go out partying and drinking and just quit putting in the effort to improve as a footballer. His drinking habits stacked up and he eventually became a full-blown alcoholic. He would show up to training drunk and players or managers could notice that he was not in the right headspace. Steve Holland, Chelsea's assistant manager at the time, even gave Mellis an earful for turning up to training drunk. Even David Luiz, who didn't speak much English, would say, Hey, have you been drinking? and then he would say stop. Chelsea tried to help him through his problems by giving him a mentor in Ashley Cole who would plead with Mellis to stop going out and drinking. But it didn't matter as Mellis was still cocky and arrogant and believed he was in the right. Every time he wasn't picked or feeling frustrated, he would erase all these problems by drinking alcohol. He would continue to mess himself up until one day it all came crashing down. In a normal training day after a weekend at paintball, Jacob Mellis' teammate Billy Clifford brought back a smoke bomb from the paintballing session. And the smoke bomb was in Billy Clifford's locker. And Mellis, not knowing what it does, pulled the thing and it started making smoke. He would try to open the windows and try to do anything to remedy the situation, but it didn't help. So the fire marshals had to come and save the situation. Thankfully, nobody got hurt from the situation, but it was still a big deal. So Neil Bat, who was the head of youth development at the time, asked who did it and Jacob Mellis raised his hand and said it was him. After the incident, the news outlets reported that Mellis was let go due to this incident, but that wasn't true according to Mellis. He says he was never let go by Chelsea and it wasn't due to the situation. He more so explained it as a mutual decision between him and Chelsea because of Mellis' lack of playing time and his frustration that came with it. He said him and his agent spoke and believed that it was the right time to make the jump as he was already t turning 20 years old. After leaving the club, he had a trial arranged with the championship side QPR and there would be a plan in place for him to get back into the Premier League after a couple of good seasons. In the trial, Mellis impressed with him scoring a goal against West Ham in the friendly. QPR's manager wanted to bring him back for another trial and it was looking likely that he was going to sign with them. However, his career was derailed yet again due to an off-field incident. This time it was due to a fight with his girlfriend. The news tabloids would describe it as a bloody brawl, but Mellis said that was a clear misunderstanding. He said that it was just an argument that had gone a little bit too far, but it wasn't that big of a deal, with his girlfriend even saying that he's done nothing. 
but nonetheless, the police had to take both of them in because it was considered a domestic disturbance. As a result, this incident would be all over the news tabloids, and it would describe it as a bloody brawl, which it was far from it. It didn't matter though, as now he was known as the guy who set off the smoke bomb in Chelsea and also got into bloody brawls with his girlfriend. At this point, Melos was embarrassed. He didn't want to go to QPR anymore because he knew what he would be seen as. His agent tried to convince him to go because it was too big of an opportunity to pass up, but he still refused. He would instead go back to Barnsley, where he felt he would be more comfortable because he was already familiar with the system, manager, and the players there from his previous loan spell. In his first season at Barnsley, he would show that he has what it takes to get back into the Premier League. He would score 6 goals in 36 games as a midfielder and even scored goal of the season in the championship that year. But next season will prove to be a much more difficult season for Jacob Mellis as he would struggle with injury and would get less and less playing time. And to add insult to injury, Barnsley got relegated to League 1. With all that happening, Jacob Mellis decided it was time to find a new club even though Barnsley offered him a new contract. He would instead stay in the championship and signed with Blackpool. But even here, he would struggle with injury and he would be released just one year after signing the contract. At this point, it was very tough for him to get offers as his reputation was him getting into a lot of off-field trouble and just being an injury prone player all around. He had to instead rely on people who knew him best, who knew that his reputation did not really perfectly describe him. Luckily for him, former assistant manager at Barnsley, David Philcroft was now the new manager of Bury. And Hillcroft, knowing Jacob Mellis' character, took a chance on him, signing him to a two year deal. He had a solid two years at Bury, but after his contract expired, he joined a new club, joining League 2 Mansfield, who was now managed by Keith Hill, who was his former manager at Barnsley. Funny enough, Keith Hill would get sacked just after one year at Mansfield, and who would come to replace him? David Philcroft. After two years at the club, he would sign a new contract with Mansfield. Shortly after the signing of the contract, Jacob Mellis was involved in a yet another off-field incident. This time he was arrested for assault and GBH after a night out with the teammate Dion Donaghy. At first, the club had to suspend them because they needed to do their own investigation into the situation. But after reviewing the footage, they decided to bring back Jacob Mellis and instead fine him, but release Dion Donaghy instead. After that season, he would sign a 6 month contract with Bolton, but he was ultimately let go after his contract ended. He would then sign a 1 year contract with Gillingham, where he barely played and only played 10 games throughout the whole season. Next year, he was signed with South End United, but he would be served up a reminder of what his reputation was. People in the community opposed his move, saying, he's going prison, he's got a charge of GBH, and just all around calling him a criminal that was no good for the team. The club didn't know what was going on, so Jacob Mellis had to explain to them that the case was all wrapped up and it was over. That wasn't the worst part of his experience at South End United though, as he suffered a knee injury that was misdiagnosed and forced him to retire early this year. With the loss of income, he was now homeless, with him relying on couch surfing with friends and family for a place to stay. This is a far cry from his early teenage days where he was earning £8,000 per week, which comes out to right around £400,000 a year. He admits he now looks for any opportunity to drink just to get rid of the stress that comes with being homeless. He has reached out to the PFA who are in the early stages of helping him, and he is set to enter the Sporting Chance Clinic to help him combat his alcoholic issues. He has now turned to a new passion in life, and that's scouting. Chelsea has helped him get his level 1 and level 2 scouting badges. And he says he enjoys scouting because he could see potential in other people, just like the potential he had when he was younger. He says he watches football every day and feels like he could spot youth talent from a mile away. And he feels like he could help them steer them in the right direction and avoid the mistakes that he made when he was younger. Unfortunately for him, permanent scouting jobs have been hard to come by, with him being homeless causing trouble in the background checks that come with working with kids. In the end, Jacob Mills' story can be used as a cautionary tale of what happens when wonder kids are too cocky and throw their potential away with off-field issues and not working hard. And also the dangers of alcoholism, where if it's used every time to deal with stress, it could soon overtake your life and control you. Me personally, I hope Jacob Mellis could get out of this situation and get a job as a scout and help mentor these young kids to not fall into the same trap and problem that he got into when he was younger. If he can overcome his alcohol problems, I feel like he has a place on football to mentor these young kids.